the Outpod. I'm Kat. I'm Dee. And this week, get ready for high-flying climbing in an unknown part of the Swiss Alps that for some reason is just only occupied by Americans. Third Man on the Mountain from 1959. Tonight on Walt Disney Presents, you shared in a perilous assignment which Walt undertook in order to produce his newest motion picture, Third Man on the Mountain. Look at it! Now, Third Man on the Mountain is ready for release to motion picture theaters where your family can share the high adventure of Walt Disney's most breathtaking motion picture. Don't miss Michael Rennie, James MacArthur, and Janet Monroe in Third Man on the Mountain when it plays in a theater near you. This movie is, I can't put my finger on it. It's something that we've watched, had a baby with something else, and it's a really boring baby. Oh, I disagree. I think this is delightful and fun. Oh boy! Oh man! No, this is I, lo- rough. I I loved this. I, I thought it was no. It's I thought so it was boring. great. I thought this was there. There are a lot of boring minutes. Oh like you're god. like, oh my god! But the tone of this movie, I think, is fun. I find this movie to be incredibly boring. All the parts when he's not on the mountain are fine. Any part that the chick is in or the old guy, those are fine. Well, okay. I mean, hang on, hang on. Elizabeth and Teo are definitely the. Uh, MVPs of the movie. But everything else, I'm just like, oh my god, would you get to the top of the fucking mountain already? Like, this is taking forever. And it's just, oh, we're gonna make it really dramatic, but nothing that bad is actually There's gonna, gonna happen. There's gonna be a montage! Montage! No, they, they were in desperate need of a montage. Before they knew how to make a montage! It, montage! It just, I don't know, it was it was kind of boring to me. I, I liked it. I thought it was fun. You laughed a lot during the movie. I laughed Um, at how ridiculous some of the stuff was. And I I just, I just found it charming. I thought it was good. I I liked it. I really did. I liked it. (sighs) This will be interesting then. Okay. Let me read the synopsis real quick. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Third Man on the Mountain. Coming of age. Family. Action adventure. Based on a true story. Here is the thrilling, critically acclaimed account of Rudy Matt, a young kitchen worker who is determined to conquer the Citadel. The jagged, snow-capped, <laughs> snow-capped peak that claimed his father's life. Encouraged by both a famed English climber and the youth's devoted girlfriend, Rudy goes through a grueling training period <laughs> before he is ready to face the incredible dangers of the killer mountain. Shot on location in Zermatt, Switzerland, and featuring spectacular scenery and an outstanding cast, Third Man on the Mountain is one of the finest adventure films of all time! Yeah. That was in all caps, third man on the mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, <sighs> what? 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 I just like, so if it's based on a true story, so what? Did he, so did they all lie about him getting to the top of the mountain too? To, Maybe. To his whole town? <laughs> but the fact that he didn't get to the top of the mountain is like neither here nor there. That's like, that last bit of the climb was easy money, but he did the right thing. He's a good guy. I know, but it's dumb. He's a good kid. I no, wish, it's not I wish dumb. that guy would have just died on the mountain and then he could have been like, Dur. no, no, that guy was good too. That guy was a fucking man. I wish he would have died on the mountain. No, fuck that. <laughs> and then he would and he could have been like, Rudy, as he fell off the mountain. He could have just kept rolling <laughs> off the mountain and it would have been just fine. That's it. You're no fool. Take it. You'll be a hero. Conqueror of the Citadel, your father's son. I'm making you a sling. Since we can't go up, we'll go down. But, anyways, I I mean, I guess it felt familiar because the director, Ken Anakin, we've seen a couple of his family. And Sword in the Rose. And, yeah. Yeah. Two of your personal personal favorites. Yeah, Sword in the Rose is great. But he also apparently won a Razzie for a movie called The Pirate Movie for Worst Director. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> it's fine. He also got huge praise for a movie called Battle of the Bull. So, you know, he's been all over the map. He's, he's been everywhere. He's been... He's had a hell of a career. Yeah. And then our writer... Eleanor Griffin. She won an Oscar for a movie called Boys Town. And she wrote, I mean, just she's written a ton of movies. And mostly comedy, which is why this movie's funny as fuck, which is why I like it. I didn't find a lot of this movie funny. I, mean, I thought all of it was funny. I thought every single bit of it was funny as hell. I thought there were funny moments, but it... And it, there were a lot of funny moments, but I think every 
even the serious parts I thought were tongue in cheek and kind of funny. It was just such a weird movie. Like it was so weird. What it's just like what a weird concept for a movie. I don't know. It's just uh, maybe I'm just out on an island. I know I'm not, but I, I think this movie was good. I think it had a lot to it. Ugh. Oh my god. And I just I don't so the guy, James MacArthur, maybe I just don't like his face. I don't know. But You don't like you don't like fucking what? You don't like Rudy? Oh no, he's fine. But I just say maybe that maybe that played into it. I don't know. He's got kind of a dumb face. But he's the kid from Swiss Family Robinson. Oh my god. No, I know he is. He's the And then we're gonna see him again in a movie called Kidnapped. That's a Disney movie? Yes. Oh, interesting. Yeah, no, it's right at the same time. We're gonna see this kid. Straight up in another leading role, just like he was in this in Swiss Family. No, he was fine. He was, he's he's a guy, you know. I, I liked his pouty little character. I think, he's he's like, just, oh. I think he's an idiot. Yeah. Always trying to go off by himself. No, it's great. That's the best part is he's an individual. He's trying to make his way. We saw you come down the mountain the other day. Like a bundle of firewood. Do you know what happened? Not exactly. What did? The worst. The very worst that could happen to a guy made other people risk their lives. I shame my uncle. Worst of all, I lost Captain Winter's faith in me. I think he's dumb. He's like, fuck all of y'all. I'm going to do it or I'm going to die. I don't give a fuck. YOLO. And then we have uh, Captain Winter, who's Michael Rennie, who's some fancy British actor. Yeah. Lots and lots and lots of TV. Lots of TV. He, like in the forties and fifties, I guess mainly he did most of his acting. But I thought he was great in this. I... No, he was he was actually one of my favorite. He parts. commanded the scenes very well. Correct, sir. And then our our um, what's the name of the village? Uh, shit! It's the Gort. Uh... Ka- K- Krakato? No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's something like uh, that. Fuck! It's um... hang on, hang on. Let's see here. <laughs> How did I not? I thought I wrote this down like several times. I don't see it anywhere. Kurtal. Kurtal. Kurtal? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Kurtal. Yeah. So, Lisbeth, who is the Kurtal 10. Okay, because, yeah, in the part where they're in the freaking festival or whatever, every other lady that was there, I was just like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. So, so this girl, who's like a six, is a Kurtal 10. Yeah. And, and she's very eager and oh, happy to please. She is, and the only thing she wants to do is swallow Rudy's dick. She is all about it. She is obsessed with him, and it's kind of just. But that kind of make that kind of helps the movie a lot. Like I think it really helps. But she has like no. And this was also, I think, why I got annoyed. Nothing to her she other has, than that she, she has, to suck his dick. She has no agency of her own. No, her whole mission is just to get with Rudy. You might ask me if I'm going to be your partner for the festival tomorrow night. Well, you are, aren't you? Oh, you! I merely wanted to know your plans, since Klaus Wesselhoft has asked me already. Klaus Wesselhoft? First my boots, then my girl. I'll punch him in the nose. Rudy. You should climb a mountain every day. And it's she has no personality of her own. It's just, oh, I'm kind of cute and sassy. But that reminds me of a small town girl. She picks a dude that she wants, and like that's it for her. That's like that's her lot in life. Yeah, but uh, Janet Monroe, she did the part very well, yeah. and she's acted with uh, uh, what's his face, James Mark Arthur before. She was also in Swiss Family. Yeah, she was also in Swiss Family. We're going to see her again in Darby O'Gillis. And so she died when she was only 38. Yeah, because she was a fucking drunkard, uh, alky, and a crazy person. Well, she had a heart problem. Well, and... Yeah. And. <laughs> and, yes. Yeah. She's typical Hollywood sad story. Early, early, yeah, early era Hollywood just sad story of like, oh, uh, she could have been really good, but... Yeah. Yeah. But, but well, and what the thing was that... She tried to go from Disney actress to hoe right away, being, like, scandalous and sexy, and people hated it. I mean, that would be She tried to do the the Miley Cyrus thing, but the Miley Cyrus thing didn't play in the early 60s. Yeah. She needed to 
graduate her way into adulthood and didn't do that. It just, um, she was really good, though. She, I thought. I thought, I thought her character was awesome. Well, I didn't like her character. Like, her well, performance was really good. Well, that's what I mean. Okay, okay. So her performance is good, and but what her character did lifting up the guy, I thought was kind of awesome. And I know you're like, oh, I'm a feminist. Blah, blah, no, no, blah, no, blah. it's not that. It's just the part when they're at the freaking, well, we'll get there. I was just like, really? Like, he's, he's just such a pussy. Like, ooh. Well, right, but... It, to call him a pussy is kind of not fair because he's treated so poorly by his parents. He, he, you mean his uncle and his mom? His parents, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they treat him like shit. Oh, no, they do. When I, he really should be a champ. Oh, your dad died. Fuck you. It's just. Yeah, your dad died. Now you have to di- wash dishes, you little bitch. Like, what? What? <sighs> and she just yeah. thinks, she knows that he is a fucking champion. She knows he's a gold medal winner. She knows he's the shit. I'm taking this dick and it's mine. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, so speaking of his uncle, uh, James. Gio! Oh, no, Franz. Yeah, James Franz. Donald. So he was in a ton of 40s and 50s movies also. Well, he was in two really huge movies. Bridge on the River Kwai. And The Great Escape. So he's, and he, so yeah, he, and he was really good actually in his part. Those um, are two movies I actually want to see. <laughs> Don't know anything about it, but I'll watch well, it. Well, they're supposed to be excellent old movies. Like, especially The Bridge on the River Kwai is supposed to be some kind of, like, like a cool movie. on the River Kwai. No. And, and then he did a ton of TV like everybody else. Scottish yeah. born actor. Super prolific actor. He probably had some role in Rob Roy that we didn't catch. <laughs> and the, the last one I have is Teo. Uh, Lawrence Naismith. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only thing that he really did that was like a big movie was Jason and the Argonauts, but otherwise... Well, but he was in... Because isn't that movie Diamonds Are Forever? Isn't that a Bond movie? Oh, maybe it is. Yeah, because yeah. he was in that, yeah. and then he was in a, a some version of the movie Scrooge. He played Mr. Fezziwig. But he fucking kicked ass in this movie. He was pretty great. The opening scene of him in the beginning was one of my favorite parts. I had high hopes at the beginning of this movie, and then just... And the scene, mm. the training scene was also I just, I just disagree good. with you. Every scene with this dude in it was an A++. No, I agree. But there's lots of scenes with this dude in it. When he's fucking with the town people about, oh, well, you know, oh, maybe I saw three people on the mountain. Oh, blah, 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 blah. And then he's up on the mountain being like, oh, fuck you, I'm staying. He, no, he's really good. I agree. But I just, it just wasn't I, enough I, to sway I, me. Uh, okay, fine. For all care. of the... Fine, I don't care. I don't. I mean, if we disagree, that's fine. I, I just, I don't mind. I don't mind. Um, well, what? <laughs> Am I supposed to be some other character in no. your mind? <laughs> no. I don't mind. <laughs> no. Just, no. Um, this movie didn't have a lot of fun facts, though. It was kind well, of, of course not. It's, it's old. <laughs> it's amazing that it had anything. Yep. Oh. But the, apparently the Matterhorn bobsleds were inspired by this movie. They were like, yeah, man, let's make the Matterhorn bobsleds. But yet they used it as a set piece somehow. So I'm like, how did it inspire it if it wasn't... It just inspired the Matterhorn. That's just all you need to know. I had that too. So the the town of Zermatt, Switzerland is still painted from this film with all the things that made it look more like an American's version of a Swiss... Resort. So it was interesting because at the beginning of the movie, in like the in like the credits or whatever, they were saying we want to pay special thanks to the town of Chamonix. That might be. That Cham- might have been it. Chamonix is in France. Mm. You know, I've been there because I've yeah, been to Chamonix. Yeah. But did it look like this? Yeah. Oh, so maybe it was Chamonix, France. But it didn't say that in where it was filmed. It was kind of confu- well. It was no, confusing. I know, I know, but. That just because it's in the fucking IMDb thing doesn't mean it's true. Yeah, because it looked just like Chamonix, and there's a huge mountain that you can go up that's in the Swiss Alps because Chamonix is like right on the border of France and Switzerland. Okay, so Sh- Sh- Chamonix, Zermatt. It, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, because yeah, I was like, oh, I've been there. Yeah, interesting because yeah. it looks similar to that little town. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only other one I had was one of the assistant cameramen fell into a crevasse and broke three ribs. <laughs> That's so fun. <laughs> so um, fun. I, I, uh, my last one is that the Citadel is not real. That mountain thing is not a real mountain. Not real. Because the only place in the world where you'll see a mountain like that is in the Tetons in Wyoming. That's the only place where you see those straight up crazy. They don't think the Swiss Alps have crazy mountains like that or Mount Everest, I mean, you know? 
No? No. No? No. Mm. They have high mountains. Just not the shape of it. Yeah, the shape. If you want that shape, you you go Teton. Tetons are bust. Did you have any other fun facts? No, was it? So I guess we'll uh, climb our yeah. way through. I was going to say, there was no way you could say anything other than climb. I was already ready for climb. <laughs> I was ready, man. Like, I was like, okay, she can't say anything else other than climb. I mean, I could have, but I decided not to be an idiot. What could you say? Uh, ascend. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a break. Okay. <laughs> We start with one man on the mountain in a suit daydreaming. Yeah. Rudy, he's daydreaming about going up and tying the red shirt on top of the mountain. But I'm still not sure why these guys climb mountains in suits. Okay, that That's one of the weirdest things in the whole movie, is these guys are wearing full-on suits, no ties, just suits. Yeah. And they're climbing mountains, and they're just like... And it shows you, this whole movie is a... uh, a technological snapshot in time of how far we've come. Because now we have like crampons and D hooks and real crazy ropes and suits that you climb in and goggles and all this shit. And these guys are climbing the whole movie. In nothing but suits. Well, they have, like, little claw things on their shoes. Kind of. Kind of. But it's, like, yeah, that would that bothered me throughout much of the movie. I was like, there's no way. There's no way you'd be climbing in those pants. Other than that's what they did. Obviously, and that's what they did. just wild. Um, Here's my wool suit. I'm going to climb it. <laughs> with a little uh, pocket square and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Rudy, he has this job in the kitchen, but he just keeps leaving in the middle he's of the a, day. He's a dishwasher, so he takes off in the middle of the day, and the chicks are like, oh, I knew he was going to take off today. Ooh. Brown. Yeah, all the chicks are all about him. And the kitchen guy, like, is mad, but he's not really mad. He pretends to be mad, but the, the what's-her-face, Elizabeth, is like, oh, you're not mad. You love it, basically. Right, right. And we see Rudy take a knee at his father's grave. Oh, so that's what that was? That was his dad's grave? Yeah. Okay, I thought it was just like some shrine thing. I don't know. No! It points it out multiple <laughs> times throughout the movie that that's his dad's grave. Oh, okay. Oh, come on, cat. I missed that. What the Sorry. fuck? I just missed it. I thought it was just like... But they pointed out over and over again that he is the son of... Francis is Matt no, or whatever. I, I the knew guy that it Matt. was. I, I understand that, but I just didn't realize that that specific thing was his. It name. says that guy's name on it. Well, I was probably just distracted by the suits. I'm oh sorry. My God. I got it now. It's all good. I just didn't realize at the time. It's okay. But do you think that that could contribute to your less enjoyment of the film? No, 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 it doesn't, doesn't no, matter no, no. that he was trying to follow in his father's footsteps no, this whole time. I understood that part very clearly. They made that clear. Oh, but okay, okay, okay. I just didn't understand that that specific shot was his dad's grave. So we get his casual mountain climb in the suit. And he's like, hello, hello, help, 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 hello, 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 help, help, help. And I didn't realize that he had spikes on his shoes, because I'm pretty sure he didn't have spikes on his shoes for the first couple shots, because I'm like, you would not be climbing without spikes on your shoes. Okay, come on. They don't need to film all the stuff. I know, but I just, I was like, that's where I started noticing the suits. I was like, he doesn't even have spikes on his shoes, but then when he went down to see our dude in the crevasse... Well, you wouldn't want spikes for the rocks. You'd put the spikes on when you went to the ice. Okay, so maybe he put them on. Okay, that checks out. But this guy, who apparently is this, like, world-famous climber, made a rookie mistake and fell into a crevasse, because he wasn't paying attention, and, uh... 
old Rudy has to rescue him out of there. And he has to rec- rescue him with no shirt on. He has to take his shirt and his suit off yeah. to add to his rope to get it down. He's like, oh, hey, I thought you were Captain... Winter. Winter. <laughs> but you couldn't be Captain Winter. I just said, oh, no, I am Captain Winter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, stupid. You did a really good job, Rudy. <laughs> it must be a mistake. Why? I couldn't have saved your life. You're Captain Winter. That's right. There's no mistake. But how could you have fallen down a crevasse? Because I was too busy looking up at a mountain to see what was at my own feet. That mountain? Yes. That mountain. <laughs> Is that how we talk? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> oh, my um, God. And then we learn that the, the mountain killed Rudy's father. Because oh, yeah. they're talking about it. And he's like, oh. Oh, you're that Matt. Oh, Rudy Matt. Oh, yes. Okay. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Your parents are dead. Um, so. They get back to town. He's like, you can't tell anybody because my stepdad slash uncle is a piece of shit. Yeah. And it establishes here that nobody wants to climb the mountain, the Citadel, because they're all scared of it. Because yep. one die, one guy died on it. Well, Rudy's dad. Right. And. Okay, and then there's this angry dude that comes on the scene, and you have no context for who this person is. But it's Rudy's stepdad. But it's Rudy's uncle. Uncle's stepdad. Whatever. And But it's like the end of the scene, and he's like, oh, my sister. And I'm, I'm like, oh, okay, he's your uncle. Like, I get it. But it, it was a little bit delayed on exactly who this person was, and it was a little <sighs> confusing at the beginning. Of but is it is his stepsister or his actual stepsister? I think they're fucking. So I think it's his stepsister. I, I think I refuse to believe that that guy is like that lady's actual just sister. No, it th- is. No, I refuse to believe that. That guy is the climber's brother who's fucking the stepsister and saying, no, kid, you can't uh, climb. It makes so much more sense that way. Maybe, but they, they kind of didn't really specify. I understand, but what I'm saying is the situation makes more sense when you put it down like that. Because it's not like, oh, he was my brother. He died on the mountain. It's like, no, fuck you, kid. Wait, so you're saying that they're, like, having an incestuous relationship or that he's the oh, guy... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, I fucked that up a little bit. Yeah, I'm confused. But, but well... No, there... It just, it just was weird. It, it is... It was a weird relationship. No, no, no. It, it was weird because of the way that they set it up. They're just yeah. brother and sister. He's just Rudy's uncle. And their whole family, like, lives in this town. But he just acts like a stepdad. Right. He acts like a stepdad. But, no, no, no. They're just brother and sister. But it didn't establish any of this or who was related to who until, like... Like, that lo- lady looks way too old to be Rudy's mom. Oh, yeah. She looks like she could be his grandmother. That was the other yeah, part that was confusing. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, is she his mom? Like, his grandmother? Did both of his parents die in the mountain? We don't know. Um, but we do. It was his mom, apparently. <laughs> um, and I'm like, okay, great. Thank you for clearing that up. Disney, appreciate it. Um, well, but... Back then, that's what your mom looked like. I mean, it's true. And, you know, if the, the rest of the ladies in the village are any telltale sign, I mean, it's true. They didn't have a dentist <laughs> or a doctor or anything else. Yeah. No uh, no Maybelline foundation back no, then. No. Uh, no tooth whitening. <sighs> no, there were some rough teeth there. Yeah. Uh, so Captain Winter wants Rudy to accompany him on a climb. Like, the next day. Right. So, he does. And Elizabeth gives her, her, him her little necklace thing. She that is so saved. just all yeah, she about doesn't, it. She doesn't care about anybody but him, which checks out, like I'm telling you. Then we get a crazy mountain montage. Oh, yeah. And they end up, like, in a cabin up in the mountain with all of these other dudes who are up there climbing. And everybody's telling tales out of school. And the uncle doesn't let Rudy drink very much and tells him to go to bed. But he, like, sneaks alcohol. I did think well, that he, was funny. He, 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 he snuck a little. And there's more montages of climbing the next morning. Is it a montage or is it just well, very it's, slowly? It, it's a montage. Uh, a slow montage. And Franz is like, I'm very anti-Citadel. We leave it forever. We never climb the Citadel. Fuck you, Mr. Englishman. 
Yeah, he's like, we don't go over there, that shadowy place. Um, and the, and then Rudy <laughs> screws around. He's all fucking off trying to be cool, and they have to rescue him. Yeah, because he gets stuck because he's dumb. You always thought I could find a better way down because I'm stupid. And he like broke. I imagine that's like a cardinal rule of climbing. Is of you course, don't, you don't break off on your own. Yeah, especially with no rope or no nothing. You just he's just free around. It, just yeah, going all over the place. So they get back down. Winter is still. He's he's like saying, "Hey, dude, don't don't worry about it. He's, Everybody fucks up." So this is what I don't. Okay. He's not even mad. Like, he's not even mad. His uncle is kind of miffed at him a little bit. His uncle's super mad. But the winter guy's like, yeah, I don't care. It's no big deal. Like, I fell in a crevasse. Who cares? His uncle made them turn him into firewood in the middle. When the porter walks between the clients and the guide, does it mean something? Don't worry about it, son. We all make mistakes. What about the other day when I walked straight into a crevasse? He embarrassed the kid. And Winter's like, Franz, I want you to help me climb the Citadel, please. And Franz is like, nope. nope. So he says, okay, I'm leaving for Geneva on yeah. a short trip and I'll be back. on a, During the shitty weather. So the next scene, we, sh- we see Rudy's shit getting sold, but Elizabeth buys his boots. So he... And she's like, yo, you can borrow them whenever you want. I'll keep them over here for you. I'll keep them here. He's like, he's oh, like, don't forget God. to oil them. And she's like, don't worry, I'll oil them and I'm going to keep them away from the rats and all this other bullshit. She's just such a fucking... She loves him. It's, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. She's all she about it. She wants to suck his dick. And it, which, isn't that the same as Swiss Family? It's the same. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. the same. That They have this dynamic, except for she played a boy, or if she didn't look anything like a boy. She's not a boy. No, remember she had the short hair, and she, yeah, t- she tucked yeah. her hair up in the thing, and they're whatever, and they're like, oh my god, it's not a boy. I'm shocked. Um, <laughs> so she gets Tio essentially take him out to the mountain and do this, hey, we're going to get your confidence back. Well, I think that was Tio's idea, actually. But Tio, yeah, takes him to the mountain. Hey, we're going to fill this bag full of rocks and you're going to climb this fucking thing by yourself. And then now you're going to, this doesn't even count, you're going to be a fucking leader and you're going to take me, an old bastard, and this broad with no upper body strength up this mountain and you're going to, you're going to do it. Yeah. You're going to be a fucking guide. And, and I love this part. No, I do like this part. And I just, I guess I just, um, I thought that, that was going to play more into the end and we'll get to there. It, it does, though. It te- He's learning. No, he is learning. But I'm saying, like, the carrying the rocks thing. I thought that, the, the, oh, we'll get there. I'll tell you. How it, it does work at the end. That's how he gets the guy down. But I thought he was going to, like, take the guy up. No, That's you don't. I'm... You can't take somebody up the mountain. Disney magic. No, <laughs> no, no. Come on. Disney magic is that guy survived the way down. Uh, as he's just rolling. Um. So he gets his confidence back and he's like, oh my God, my life is great. They're all smiles as they come down the mountain and then he starts fighting with his uncle again. Captain Winter came to see me. If he still believes in me, why can't you? Captain Winter is famous for believing in the impossible, but I doubt if even he would go that far. <laughs> Be careful, boy. I warned you. Please, Uncle. Won't you try me? Let me be your porter. Tomorrow. No! Why not? Because I have two hands, two legs, one head. I need those for my clients and to look after myself. <laughs> now get back where you belong! <laughs> His uncle's like... Well, the, well, Tio and, and Elizabeth encourage him to confront his extremely drunk storytelling uncle. Yeah, he's like, oh, he's in a good mood. Go ask him to, you know, yeah. you're going you're gonna to work for him to uh, be a, what, is it, what do they call it? A, not a steward. A guide. A guide. A porter. A porter, yeah. For him yeah. tomorrow. And his uncle's like, fuck that. You're an idiot. Never. So he gets all upset and he's like, I'm so embarrassed. I have to run away. Yeah, well, he finds out winter left for good. Then it's the festival, and he's like, I can't be dancing with you. Why don't you go dance with douchebag Klaus, Mc- Klaus McBagel douche son? And she does, trying to make him jealous, looking really happy, even though she was only just trying to set him off. 
it's he's just like just such a bummer and that like he it, i don't know it just maybe i i just didn't feel like it was that embarrassing uh, i think it was my uncle won't have me well uh, he embarrassed him in front of the whole village loudly that was the problem <sighs> that whole thing is right in front of the whole village. It's a no, tiny I, little I place. No, I understand. And I guess if you're in this tiny village... And he's calling you basically a little baby piece of shit. And I guess if you're in this village, climbing is like all that matters. I don't know. It is all it's, that matters. You're either a climber or a fucking... Or a oh, dishwasher. Little, little bitch dishwasher. Oh, so pe- people... So he goes to the Citadel. He finds well, out that they're up there, and yeah, he goes there. Because people at the festival were talking, oh, I saw two people up there, and he's like, oh my god, I gotta go see what's two, going on. Two, I'm gonna be the third. Yeah. Third man on the moon. Dude, dude, dude. Okay, I can't read my own hand. Okay. So... Uh, oh, so he goes up to the, the cabin and sees that it's winter, and this other guy who's from a neighboring town, but it's it's unclear to me, like... Emil Saxo. Is this guy, like, what... I don't know what nationality this guy they, is. No, he's the same. So he's Swiss, too. Oh, okay. They had talked about him before. Oh, they did? Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And, and, but, yeah, so... So, Captain hired Emil Saxo. He's from a rival town, basically. Because Franz is a little bitch. Okay, and so this guy is like, oh, I'm gonna go show them up, because apparently he's been studying the mountain for ten years, trying to figure out how he can get up there. Right. And this is where Tio sees all three of them up there, and he's fucking with the townspeople. He's like, "I did like this part." Oh, one, two. The oh, th- here's third. Here's the third man on the mountain, Rudy. And Rudy. What's his, last, what's his last name? I forgot. Uh, Scott. No. no. Tar. No. Shit. I can't remember his last name. It's something he, very short. Because he here. said it, and then his uncle's like, "What?" No, and then, so he, then he basically chews all of them out. Well, they like, say it all the time. God damn it. It's got, uh, Rudy Hat. Are you looking? Matt. 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 Okay, I wasn't too far off with Hat. Um, but basically, Tio then chews all of the men folk out because he's all, you guys are a bunch of cowards. Like, he's a boy and he went and up he's there. he's the only one that's man enough to climb this fucking thing in 16 years. You're all pussies. Thought he was sulking, roaming the hills. Instead of saving your foolish faces. Watch what you say, old man. I will. But what I say is this. You call yourselves guides. I call you a herd of sheep. Every day you go out and climb peaks that have been climbed a hundred times before. Peaks your grandmothers could climb. Then you come back and tell yourselves how good you are. Well, maybe now you'll find out you're not so good. Three climbers are on the Citadel tonight. An Englishman, a man from Proley, and from Kartal, who? A man? No, a boy. An 18-year-old boy who alone among you is not afraid. Who's afraid? You are, big mouth. You all are. He's not wrong. I mean, it's just nobody's going to go up there after there was this apparent freak accident. But I just, I'm still also confused about exactly what happened to his dad. Well, no, no, no. His dad, Tio, and some other guy were guiding somebody up the mountain. Right. There was an avalanche or some kind of problem. Right. And his dad was taking care of the guy just like he was taking care of... Uh, no, I got that part. And something bad happened. Or, or I think he, like, froze to death. Well, they said there was an avalanche, but I'm wondering... But he froze to death because he had all of his clothes off helping the other guy. But then how did he find the secret way? That's what I'm not... He had already found it. Oh, okay. And then he came down to tell everybody else, but... But there was an act... Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That that part was confusing me at the end of the movie, because the whole secret passage and... Yeah. Anyways. um, So, Rudy lies and is saying, telling Mr. Winter, oh no, my uncle and mom said it's fine to be here. It's cool. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, so they're going to climb with the email Saxo, and then down below, five villagers agree to go up to the Citadel to kind of help Franz and maybe take back the boy. Well, and they're upset that that Saxon guy's up there with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
But then they're climbing. But then Teo decides to go up with them too. Which okay, I thought Teo. They said he was disabled. He's they call him crippled, which he is. He's like slow moving, and but he can still do. But he can still stuff. climb. So it's yeah. like, how is he? How is he crippled? Because he probably can't climb more than like once every four months or it, something. It's just I'm like, okay, crippled my ass. He's so climbing. They, so they're all going to get Rudy, but Rudy decides to go against the captain's wishes of going back and telling Franz that he's up there and getting him to come up and decides to climb the Citadel himself. Well, at some point in the midst of all this, there was like a rock slide and the captain got hit by a rock, right? Well, yeah, that's not as important. No, because that's yeah. why they had to go back for more supplies. Yeah, yeah. And it is important. It is, but this is all confusing. It, this whole part is confusing. Because Rudy decides he's going to go up by himself, and he finds his father's, like, secret route. It's a chimney! And there's a storm. And he has to, like, get his way back down, and all the men all rally at the hut. And and Rudy's lies and everything else. And Okay, so then they decide, okay, we're going to go up. It's going to be Mr. Uh, Saxo... Mr. fucking Franz are going to put their town differences behind them. And Rudy. And Winter. And Winter are all going to go up. Yeah. and so Don't tell Rudy's mom. Yeah. Don't tell her. Don't want her to worry. And so the Winter's like, let Rudy take the lead because he knows the way. But But I really just want to stare at his backside. Until they get to the passageway. And Saxo's like, oh yeah, it's not passable. It narrows out. Rudy's like, oh, no, I don't think so. I, I'm going to take a chance at it. And Rudy climbs his fucking way through it, of course. Slithers his way through it, and it's disgusting, and I hate this part. Yeah. I it's like he's, myself. like, splunking through this thing. Yeah, it's like going through a cave, but up. Yeah, and he almost gets stuck, but then he doesn't. Oh, I've done it to myself again. He's like, Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bother. Oh, bother. <laughs> but he makes it through, and he throws everybody down the rope. Everybody comes up. And they stay in tents that night, and, and Saxo's like, oh, yeah, bro, uh, Captain Winter is not doing too good His tonight. head's really fucked up. Yeah, his, he's, like, sick, so, like, why don't we just go up with Adam, bro? Yeah, and then uh, Franz is telling him, no, a guide never leaves his client, like, no. Yeah, they, they have a dick measuring contest, and really, Franz wins. But in the morning, Saxo's out climbing, so the boy thinks he should be out climbing, too. Yeah, and he follows him, and he, being Rudy the idiot, causes some rock to fall, and it scares the shit out of Saxo, because he doesn't just be like, hey, I'm following you, don't get startled. Well, which he should have known. He could see easily that the kid's following. Yeah, they're both idiots. And so Saxo falls off the fucking mountain and Rudy goes after him and Saxo's like rolling down the mountain. He's Breaking like his bones. He's like, "Wait, don't move." And he rolls some more. <laughs> so stupid. And then he's like, "Oh, I'm broken. Just leave me. I want to die." And Rudy's like, "No, no, no. I'm going to take you back. It's fine." Yeah. Uh he does the right thing essentially cuz he could just climb the mountain and be the first one to the top. But he doesn't. He does the right thing. He gets him down to the tents. Uh, and Franz and the captain make it to the top. The The captain puts the red shirt. Yeah, it's like Rudy's dad's shirt. Up at the top. And he's like, oh, we made it. And Rudy did it. Blah, 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 blah. They go down. And Rudy's like, no, I didn't make it. But he's like, yeah, you made it. You were the one. But that's what, so were they like lying to everybody? They're like, yeah, no, he made it eh, to the top. I think they just wanted to make the legend that Rudy did it. Because he, he easily could have. He just, that last part of the climb was no big deal. But he did the right thing. So they're like, no, Rudy deserves the Rudy! <laughs> Rudy! And, yeah, Elizabeth is like, oh, my God. But it's funny when she was going to kiss him and he, like, did, like, a pullback. He was like, don't kiss me, I'm gay. That that could be. Because if you recall in the cabin with all the dudes, I actually skipped over this note in my thing when he's like, okay, Rudy, go to bed. As he's climbing up the thing, the one guy gave him, like, a hand slap with a There group. was a lot of slapping on the butt. Like. That, that kitchen witch got slapped on the butt. 
but with Rudy specifically, there was so much yeah, like people, yeah. old dudes trying to play grab ass with Rudy. It yeah, was just yeah. very strange. So, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the end of the movie. He's like, oh my God, I'm a guide now. Oh, I'm a guide. I'm a guide. What are you? All right. So, you got me awards cat? I have a couple. Yeah. Um, first one I made my own. I said, oh, you don't know him? Characters are pre- appearing out of context with no explanation. You're just supposed to know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> the whole first, like, 15 minutes of the movie, I was like, who's this person? I don't, I'm so confused. Like, it just, that was really bad. Like, they didn't do a good job of introducing characters. It, uh, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's fine. I, I wasn't really that worried about it. Uh, my first award was the Rudy I Do What I Want Award. <laughs> Because he just does whatever he wants. He does do literally whatever he wants. Doesn't learn from his mistakes. He's just he's like... Just, well, no, he learns from his mistakes, but he still just does whatever he wants. He's going up. He's going up the mountain. Doesn't matter. He's, Even the bitches can smell when Rudy's going to go up the mountain. They're, they're like, oh, he's going. The dog's barking at him. Um, I had the... Uh, you didn't make it to the summit, did you? The... <laughs> <laughs> anticlimactic ending for me because I just it would have been better for me if he would have and I know it's stupid because it wouldn't have been possible but I thought the whole thing with the rocks was like his uncle be or his uh the T.O. guy teaching him like oh you, you know you have to carry these difficult burdens and he could have like put the guy on his back and climbed the last little bit well and that would have been a better like I, I I think that you're just making it very unrealistic where this whole thing is unrealistic no where he literally put the guy on his back to get him down to help him out because the guy multiple times told him just leave me here don't help me down but he could- but he got him down. You, no, no, no. You never go up with somebody hurt on a mountain. That's not the way to do it. You also don't climb in suits. Well, okay. We'll debate that because we don't know what But the, No, no. I'm just saying. Back for, in the day did. But he got the guy off the mountain even though he should have just died on the mountain. I'm just saying for the purpose of like Disney magic. Ugh. He could have put the guy out there and the guy, he's like, you deserve to see the top of the mountain too. No, this stinks. And that... then his uncle comes up and then they plant the thing together and they no, mend the fences of the no. of the dueling towns. No, that stinks. No, that's great. No, that stinks. <laughs> uh, the, uh, my other one is I gave the Ed Wynn Award for Tio because that's he really bad. saves the movie. It's not Uncle Tio is the tie that binds the movie together. Along with a little bit of Elizabeth, but really Uncle T.O. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, I had another one that I made up on my own. The musical note to nowhere. Because there were many times where they would have these dramatic, <laughs> yeah, dramatic sound effects. And then, like, something was going to happen, like he's going to fall or something. And then nothing would happen. But you're, like, supposed to see that he really stretches leg far. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, oh my god, he stretches leg far. Okay. But it happened a lot. And it, was, it just was just not. Just, okay. So my next award is the Condor Man Award for all the montages. It was just all the, mo- all the fucking Ugh. rock climbing shit was all the same. It's like, <laughs> wait, are you going to notice if we just keep filming the same people climbing a face of a mountain over and over again? It was so No, weird. you're not going to notice that, right? Oh, uh, but we're going to keep showing you the same shit. Yeah, that's what I mean. The whole, all the mountain climbing stuff was so boring to me. Yeah, it was boring to anybody. It just really was not, like, somebody could have fallen. That could have been dramatic. Um, My last one is the Chloris Leachman Inappropriately Horny Award for Lizbeth. She just was out of control. Same. Just. It was clear from the very beginning. Lizbeth was just like, mm, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, she. What did she say? She's like, you should something more often. Would it? Oh, you should climb uh, mountains every day so that you can fuck me hard and have this emotion. Because that's what he had. He wanted to kill the other guy. I don't remember the douchebag little guy. Klaus. Klaus. It, it, after they climbed, he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna fucking kill Klaus," and she's like, "Fuck yeah, you're gonna kill Klaus." It, it, she was turned on by. She was turned on by everything. He, yeah. like, could sneeze, and she's like, oh, my God. Yeah. Did you have any other ones? No. Neither did I. So, biggest surprise, disappointment? I actually didn't have anything for this. Why is it so good? 
I, I just uh, disagree with you. That's fine. I think this is a good movie. I think it's I think it's really good. That's fine. I think it's a really fun the whole way through. I have another alternate ending or another alternate reality idea for this movie if we remade it though. Aside from the stuff I already that said. That it's cliffhanger? No. That he goes up through the little shimmies up through the hole and his dad's like not dead. His dad <laughs> his dad's just been living on the mountain. Sakahawea. Or when they go up to the cabin, like well, but I guess it's been 16 years. He would have found his way down. But either way, like, his dad's just not dead. That In some way, his He's dad... He's like, son, I hate your mother. Yeah. <laughs> Son's like, oh, yeah, that chick is actually my other daughter. Sorry. <laughs> Hope it's not weird for you. I've been trying to haunt this hut to keep everybody away. Yeah. He has, like, a whole other family up there. Just saying. His dad's not dead. It would yeah. be great. There you go. Good job. Did you have any other remakes? Sequels? no, no. no. Like I said, Cliffhanger the movie is essentially the sequel to this. Oh my god. Any final thoughts? I mean, I just I just found this movie to be very boring and not funny. I which it, you found it to be thrilling and funny. So. I think it punches way above its weight class. Ugh, it's way better than it has any business being. And yeah. yeah. Did you get a bougie? I got a budget, but I couldn't find a gross. It's two million dollars. That doesn't seem like a lot. High budget film. It's not. It might not be accurate, but actually it could be because you know they had to reuse the same climbing shots over and over again. So, so what do you think the Rotten Tomatoes score for this movie is? <sighs> God, like fifty percent. So there's no critic score, which is not surprising because it's fifties. But with the people, it's seventy four. Oh boy, this is going to be divisive. If Cat gave this a score, what would it be? Cat will definitely give this a score. It's not good because Cat found this movie incredibly boring. Um, a 33% or 3.3 out of 10 dramatic overtures. Blowtorch. Blowtorch. Yeah, I, it blow found torch. it very boring. All the wow. climbing stuff was so boring. So I'm right in line with the people. I gave it to 73. I thought this movie was great. It was funny. Uh, there was a lot of wackiness. And, and just all throughout, I found myself smiling and kind of just being entertained all of the time. I just found that it wasn't very wacky. I found like they were trying to be really serious, but I couldn't take it seriously. Oh, sorry. Every serious scene I thought was really funny. It, but I don't know. I just found this movie very boring and just yeah. I guess I found the comedy here, and you didn't. No, definitely no comedy for me. I mean, comedy was like. You know, why are they wearing suits? Why is well, this? Well, I know? got over that quickly, but I mean, maybe some of us. What's wrong with this chick? Up. What? I don't like movies. I think where they make it such a big deal for somebody to do something. Like the whole thing was building up to where he had to climb to this mountain and be the third man on the mountain, and then it doesn't happen. It just makes me irritated. I think. Okay. So now it's time for cats' favorite part of the podcast. So this time we get number 112. Oh, that was quick. No repeats? Not this time. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think? 112. What number was this one? This was like 70 something, right? 1973 for 112. Oh. Uh,. Shit, what have we watched that's, like, close to it? Just a second. I'll fill in the last one. Let's see. Before it, two, three movies before it was World's Greatest Athlete. Oh, boy. One, two, three, four, five movies after this is Island at the Top of the World. Oh, boy. Sandwiched between two amazing... Oh, boy. Two um, truly amazing films. Um, I have no idea. So... So, from 1973, number 112 is Robin Hood. Oh, like the animated one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one is not one that we had when I was a kid, so I actually didn't watch this very much as a kid. The bare necessity. Well, I know, so I know that, you know, I've seen it, obviously, but it was not one that we watched, so I don't have a lot of nostalgia for it. I don't think, well, okay, 
I may have, but I don't know for sure because I never know. I could have. Oh, you don't even know if you've seen it. I'm sure I've seen most of it, maybe. But I also may have seen it many times, but I don't know. So it's, I imagine it's just Robin Hood. Well, yeah, it's the story of Robin Hood. That's, I mean, we've seen it five million times, you know, Little John Robin Hood made Marion. I mean, Costner. it's not, I mean, it's it's not going to be, you know, as good as Men in Tights, but, you know, yeah, yeah, whatever. Well, it will not be. There's no Carrie Elwes or Dave Chappelle to save this. Yeah. But it'll still be good. Wasn't it in Men in Tights? Wasn't what's his face from Kerr? Wasn't he the print, the king or whatever? Or the the guy, the Rich, Rich, Larry's oh. friend. Oh, yes. Was Richard, it, Richard was the was it, yeah. Wasn't he in that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. that Okay, that makes so much more sense now. I was like, yeah. okay. Yeah, he's good in that. Yeah, yeah, that whole is, movie is great. Yeah, it is fantastic. I saw it at a drive-in. I've never been to the drive-in. Yeah. Oh, we gotta go to the drive-in. Do they even have those anymore? Yeah, there's one in Belfair. Yeah, no, I've never been to the drive-in. No, the Belfair drive-in is dope, and it's one of the last ones left. We will... And we have a truck now, so we could, like, sit right. and we'll do the discuss, thing. We'll discuss and reconvene this okay. later. But in the meantime, uh, Disney Odd Pod, gmail.com, give us five stars, do whatever you want. Like, subscribe, leave tell, us a review. Tell a friend. Phone a friend. Tell a friend. In the meantime, this has been Disney Odd Pod. I'm Kat. I'm Dee. Bye! Be rude to him. I'm that not, was rude. I'm not being rude. Just, Poor Luke. Did Mama push you? He's like I didn't push him. He's like Mama. I have diabetes. I didn't push him. I just pushed and I'm the blanket. Confused. I got diabetes. And... The blanket's too hot. I don't want it on me. Oh, okay. that's all I did. That's all I did. Really, it's cold. In here. Yeah, I feel really warm. That's all I did was oh. push the blanket so it wouldn't be on me. I didn't push the dog. Poor Luke. Suggested movies include. Island at the Top of the World, Swiss Family Robinson, Davy Crockett in the Wild Frontier. <laughs> Darby O'Gill. No, that's not on the, the Disney Plus suggested movies. <laughs> yeah, my left eye is twitching.